Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be at the 3040 CNC. We're going to cut some basic circuit boards. So what I'm going to show you guys in this episode is actually pretty simple, but I think pretty neat. So I need to create some solder pads for a project I'm doing on the Tron XC uh, printer, which you'll see in an upcoming episode. But I figured, hey, uh, I'm doing this. I thought this was rather interesting, so I figured I'd show it to you guys. So what I'm going to do is design up some pads and cut them out on the CNC. So what I've got is my um, uh, copper clad board stuck down with some uh, two-sided carpet tape. I'll have a link for this down below. Works out great for this. I've got it on a piece of um, uh, plywood so I can you know, cut into it when I cut the pieces out. I've got this held down to the bed. Uh, because I'm only doing pads, I'm not really doing a full circuit board here. I am using a 1.2 millimeter end mill uh, just to make kind of quick work of all this stuff because the only thing I'm going to do is auger out uh, the delta around the pad so I can solder to the pads and kind of make a jumper strip that I'm going to put into a uh, uh, piece of shrink tubing. Anyways, tell you what, let's hop over to the computer for a little bit. I'll show you the basics of the design, really simple stuff. And again, I'm sharing more of the concept and how to do all this stuff because, you know, if you have all this stuff, you probably know the basics. But when I was doing this, I kind of came up with this idea for jumper pads, and I figured I'd share it with you. So let's go over to the computer and we'll meet back here. So we have got Inkscape open, and what I've done is uh, actually used a couple rounded corner squares to create the pads, as you can see here. And then I used similar rounded corner but smaller pads on the inside. This is where the copper traces will remain. Now because I'm using a larger 1.2 millimeter uh, end mill, I've had to leave a little bit extra room in between these guys so the uh, end mill can fit in there. Now one of the things to give myself the extra space but keep the PCB still small enough to go inside the heat shrink tubing, I've moved these pads to the outside. So to fully form this, what I will use is the cutout from this to separate this. So instead of leaving some extra wasted space, I've just pushed these to the edge. So again, very simple concept, nothing very hard here. Just kind of used a couple of rounded corner squares, laid this out, boom, and then I've replicated it to this one. Now I've exported this as an EPF file and brought this into Cut2D. And here we can see the pocketing action that, that's going on. Now I've used rasterized pocketing to make sure I clean out all the um, copper and I don't leave any artifacting because a non-rasterizing tool strategy would have left me with some copper in here, here, and here uh, because of the pathing of the tool. So with this, when I finish, you'll notice it's a very clean cut. And I did a little bit of an inlay at the onset as a teaser and you can kind of see it really came out very clean. Now the other piece I'm going to do is these are rather narrow but I'm going to tin them with solder and then that way I can just touch the soldering iron the wire and it all becomes one to a pre-tinned wire. So pretty straightforward stuff nothing too complicated here but that's one of the nice things about this that I want to share with you guys is uh, literally it took less than three minutes to cut this on the CNC very quick with the larger end mill and uh, came out very handy and it gave the project a very clean look instead of having uh, a bundle of uh, wires with heat shrink tubing on top of heat shrink tubing. So anyways, tell you what, let's head back over to the machine and cut this out. Okay, so we're back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up on a time lapse and we're going to go ahead and cut these pads out. So let's get into it.
Okay, so here we are back at the bench. We've cut them out. You saw the time lapse. Unfortunately, I had a grocery delivery come as I was doing the time lapse. I didn't get to blow out the end portion of it, so sorry about it if there's a little bit of dust, but you kind of got the idea how it all worked. Anyways, um, the outcome is, I'm, I'm really impressed. So this turned out very nice. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is, is when I um, solder these, I'm going to, you know, tin these entire uh, pads. And so, uh, and then attach the wires to the ends. So I really like these. I actually wish I would have cut out a few more. Uh, I just really didn't have the time. I'm a little bit pressed for time, but I wanted to get these out because I got a project going on with the Tron Xe, and I need these to finish that project. So kind of a little bit hurried. But I wanted to share this with you guys because this is kind of really neat how you can, you know, use CNC for 3D printing to make various parts and everything like that. So this was really handy. I'm going to do some more stuff like this because, in essence, it took more time to film all this than it did to actually do it. I've, I, I could have gone from design to actually cutting in like less than 10 minutes um, and produce this part. Uh, the machine run wasn't that long at all because again I used the larger end mill to auger this out. Um, having done this now and, and knowing this board because I really didn't know the thickness of the copper and everything else on this board so I kind of winged some of the settings uh, in the CAM program cut 2D. Knowing this now I could speed it up any, even faster so I'm gonna probably make some of these uh, you know uh, uh, to just have lying around the shop because these are just really handy for just kind of connecting up different things uh, and I'll probably make a little bit bigger ones. These were made really to work with sp some specific heat shrink too such as this so the idea is is uh, this will just slide in there I'll be able to heat, heat shrink it and I'll have actually a clean looking um, setup because instead, you know, I already did this once with the wires. So I did the, you know, four individuals and then I put a big one around it and it looked like this big knot. It just did not look attractive. And one of the things I really like is attractive looking. If I build something, I want it to look attractive. And so I think this does it. So anyways, hey, swag shop up there. Subscribe over there. Comment below. Do you get any more ideas that I could do something like this with or you guys do something like this with? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, I was interested in hearing from you guys. Cheers and see you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.